Today we're going to do a lesson on how to start and do a diagonal scarf. Here's an example of one that I made not too long ago. I used two zauber balls. If you've never used that yarn, I really do recommend it. It is a wonderful yarn. There is sock weight and a lace weight, and I'll put links to this yarn down below in the description. But we're going to do this this kind of a scarf today and you start at one end and it increases until it gets as wide as you want it. Then you continue on this way and the entire time your rows are going diagonal rather than typical knitting would just go back and forth. So this is a scarf that I did and I changed colors I had two different color zauber balls and I just changed the color every other row down and back and you can see it really made some great color changes. It's a fun project. It's one of those projects you don't have to have a pattern for. You just have it in your head and you'll know it. Here's another one that I just started not too long ago. This one's with worsted weight yarn. And uh, I've got a Karen cake. If you haven't tried these Karen cakes, they're a lot of fun, lots of great color changes. And then this is just some yarn I got from Hobby Lobby. It had a lot of color changes. So this one will change slowly, and this one changes quickly. So I started with a cream color, and it's slowly getting to be a tan color. Tan. And then it'll get darker and darker as this thing progresses. So this one isn't as wide as the other one. This one's a lot more narrow, and it's a lot thicker because this is worsted weight and the other one was sock weight. So uh, let me get started and show you how to start this thing and how to make your own diagonal scarf. Okay, I've got uh, two colors of yarn that we're gonna use for this demonstration, and I've got size nine needles. You use whatever size needle and uh, yarn that you feel like. The first project I showed you was sock yarn, and I probably used a size 3 or 4 needle. And then the second one I showed you is in worsted weight, so I would have used a, probably a size 7 or 8 needle. So I'm going to start with 3 stitches, and I'm going to cast on 3 stitches using the long tail method. So I'm going to get three stitches on my needle, and that's going to start. So the first thing we want to do, I'm going to knit one row just to get things started. Then we're going to start the actual technique and start changing colors. So the first row, we knit every stitch. Now we're going to introduce our second color, and this is the technique you'll use to get your scarf as long as you want it, the width of the scarf that you want to make. So first off, what we need to do is we need to do an increase at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row. We're going to increase on both ends. I start my new color. I'm going to do a knit stitch, and now I'm going to do an increase into this second stitch. I'm going to knit into the front and into the back of this second stitch. And I want to do a, another increase, but I'm not going to do a knit into the front and the back. For this one time, I'm going to do an M1, which is a make one. So I'm picking up the bar in between the two stitches and I'm going to knit into that stitch to create a new stitch. And then because this is a slip stitch scarf, I'm always going to slip the last stitch. So I bring my yarn forward, I go into that last stitch as if to purl, and I pull it off. So I did a, a an M1 right here. You can certainly do whatever kind of increase you want, but at the end of this very first color change, and it's really technically the third row, you want to have five stitches. 
So I slipped this last stitch. I'm always going to slip the last stitch on every row. This is the back side. And on the back side, I'm always going to knit every stitch till I get to that last stitch. And then I'm going to slip it. Pull my yarn forward as if to purl. Go into the stitch as if to purl and pull it off. Just kind of clean up my ends here, tighten everything a little bit. Now I have my five stitches. I'm establishing my slipped stitch edge. And now I'm going to just start changing colors. And every time I'm going to do an increase at the beginning of the row and an increase at the end. Now I'm not going to do increases into the very first stitch or the very last stitch. I'm always going to work my increases in the, in the middle. I'm always going to do them in the, on the second stitch and the second to the last stitch. It makes for a neater edge. So I'm not going to use my blue. I'm not going to use my blue. I'm going to pick up and use my gold for this next row. I'm going to knit one, and now I'm going to make my increase. I'm going to knit into the front, reach around, and increase into the back, and then knit to this second to the last stitch. And now I'm ready to do another increase. Knit into the front, reach around, knit into the back. And then I'm going to slip my last stitch, bring my yarn forward, go into the stitch as if to purl, turn my work, and now knit back. I'm going to knit every stitch until I get to that last stitch. You can certainly use stockinette stitch with this. I happen to be using garter. If you do use stockinette, keep in mind that it will curl where garter stitch will lay flat. I bring my yarn forward, pull my stitch off purl wise, turn my work, and now I'm going to start using the blue. Knit the first stitch, work the increase into the second stitch. You can use an M1 if you feel more comfortable with an M1, feel free. Knit down to the second to the last stitch. Now I'm going to do another knit into the front and the back, or you can do an M1. Bring my yarn forward, slip that last stitch, turn, knit back. So you're going to keep up this technique of increasing every other row always on the front side and changing colors every other row and you keep doing this technique until the scarf is as wide as you feel you want to make it and once i get a few more rows in you'll be able to see really what's happening but this is the very corner and this section here is the bottom of the scarf, and this section here is going up the right side of the scarf. And I continue to work these diagonals until this gets as wide as I want. So for the sake of this demo, I'm not going to make this as wide as I would normally make a scarf, but I am going to add quite a few more stitches here, and I'll speed up the video. And then when I'm getting ready to start the next step, I'll slow the video down and show you.
So I've done several rows and I'm knitting back and I, I have decided for this demo, I've made it as wide as I want to make it. Clearly you would make it a lot more stitches on your needle to make your scarf as wide as you want it. But for this demo, I've decided on my next row, I'm going to start the next procedure. So my next color is going to be the blue. And what I've been doing, I'm increasing here and I'm increasing here. And my stripes are now going diagonal. And you will make it, as, again, as wide as you want it. But the next row, whenever you decide that this is as wide as I'm, I want it, and my next row is going to be where now the scarf is going to go straight up on both sides rather than continuing to grow. So what you're going to do is you're, instead of doing an increase here and an increase here, you're going to start with an increase, just like we've been doing. But on this side, instead of increasing, you're going to do a decrease. And I'm going to knit two together when I get down here to the end. So I'm going to do exactly the same as I've been doing. I'm going to knit one. I'm going to make an increase. Knit into the front and the back. Knit down to the, instead of the second to the last stitch, I'm going to stop when I get to the three stitches left. So here I have three stitches left. Now I'm going to work a knit two together and slip my last stitch. That's going to be the corner where I turn the corner. And now I'm going to do what we've been doing all along is knit all the way back. And in a couple of rows, you'll start to see how the form has changed on the scarf. So we'll do a couple rows here. I'll speed it up after you've seen how the scarf is going to start straightening itself out and just becoming longer rather than just wider. Three stitches left. Knit two together, then slip the last stitch, knit back. You can see here as I hold it up how the width of my scarf is now fixed by doing increases here, decreases here. Now my scarf is heading up straight on both sides and the scarf is as wide as I decided I wanted it. I'm going to break here and go ahead and knit quite a few more rows and then stop when i'm getting ready to do the very last procedure where your scarf is as long as you want it and then you want your scarf to start closing up and coming back to a point so i'm going to cut here and i'll pick it back up in just a minute okay i've been knitting and adding rows and you can see that diagonals are doing their thing and now you're at the end of your scarf and you want the scarf you want the scarf to come together and be three stitches again. So what we're going to do is at this part instead of increasing here and decreasing at the end, we're now going to start decreasing on both ends. Just how like when we started, we increased on both ends, then at some point we decided to increase here and decrease here. 
now we're going to decrease on both ends and that will start to slowly bring the scarf together back to three stitches so rather than do an increase i'm now going to do a knit two together knit to the end and do a knit two together like we've been doing and you want to maintain your slip stitch edge all the way to the end so that the top of your scarf will still have a nice slipped stitch edge knit two together slip the last stitch it doesn't leave a very nice clean edge knit back again you can do the same technique with more than two colors you could add as many colors as you want or you could just do it with a single color as long as you do the increases and decreases in the right right edges it will work out and look beautiful this makes for a fun project to take with you if you have to go to a doctor's office or go sit wait for your car to get the oil changed this is a great project to take with you because there really is no pattern you just have to remember your increases and decreases you can see here this 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 edge is going straight and now it's just now starting to go vertical no it's starting to go horizontal I get that right knit one knit two together You can see here as I kind of stretch this out you can see here this is the definite corner and we're just doing this top edge of the scarf I'll speed it up until I have five stitches left I'm almost there I have seven stitches left All right, I have my five stitches left. I'm going to get down to three stitches. I want to maintain my slipped stitches on the ends. So I'm going to have to make a decision when I get here to the end. I want to slip this stitch, which means I'm going to knit these two together, which means I need to knit these two together to start with. But I want to keep this slip stitch edge. So what I'm going to do instead of my normal knit two together here I'm going to knit the first stitch I'm going to knit two together here I'm going to just knit one slip my last stitch turn and knit back then I'm going to do my next decrease and that'll get me down to three I'm kind of cheating and adding a bit of an extra row but it'll make my edges continue to be the slip stitch edge and it'll make for a neater ending so I'm gonna knit my first stitch knit two together and slip my last stitch that makes for my three now I'm going to bind off and knit one 
Knit the second one and bind it off. This would be my last, which would typically be a slipped stitch, but I'm going to go ahead and bind it off. Cut my yarn. World's dullest scissors. And pull my tail through. So now I have my finished scarf. And sometimes you have to do a little blocking. Sometimes you have to do a little pulling and pushing just to get your... Um, I would normally, depending on what I'm, what material I'm using, I would pin this out and block it. And that's where this edge can be straightened up. Pin it to the way you want it. At this point also I cut the yellow, leaving enough tail to weave in. And then I take my two colors that I finish with and I put a knot in them. Some people don't like to put knots in their knitting. I don't have a problem with it. I don't want that to come undone. I knot that. Then you can weave in your ends, weave in these ends, and then I typically will block my scarf because as you can see just from the way my tensions are I have this side is a tad shorter than this side so when I block it I will pin it so that the thing is actually a rectangle. I will pin it the way I want it. And I usually do a steam blocking and then wait till it's completely dry and then take the pins out and then the thing will lay completely rectangle and look right. And at the same time you've maintained your slip stitch edge which looks nice all the way around. So I hope you've enjoyed this technique. I'd love to see some of your projects that you try. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. Again, I will put a link to the Zauber balls that I used in the first scarf that I showed you. If you have any other uh, comments or suggestions, again, leave them in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.